Right, welcome to session one in Hamble. Fun fact about Hamble, it is the second largest sport in Europe. It's getting bigger everywhere, especially in London now with the local teams in London getting bigger and bigger each year. And we're trying to introduce Hamble into all the schools as well as great local tournaments in Hamble as well. So, warm up uh, specific to Hamble is simply just follow the leader, you're going to be practicing fainting. Especially Hamble, you need to be, have good agility from going left to right. It's nice and simple. I'm in front, we have our assistant at the back, or my learning partner at the back, and I'm following the crew. Trying to get weight to do. Okay, if you want to do practice down the plane. So you can do specific um, instructions if you want, you can do like your high knees, or you can do your lunges if you want in your learning partners, so you can do anything like high knees, heel flicks, lunges, side stepping, so you've always got that following the leader, changing different direction as well. So in today's session you're going to be looking at dribbling, it's one of the key areas of, um, of handball, dribbling up and down, you need to get used to the handball itself and how we do the key techniques of dribbling, then we're going to be looking at doing one on one, trying to get past each other while doing your dribbling. Now, just the key two points about the dribbling is being able to keep your back nice and straight so you can scan the area of your handball court. And most of all, which makes handball more specific because it's similar to basketball. In basketball, you use the speed and you're snapping your wrist down. But with the handball, you're making sure you wrap your hand around the handball. And what you're doing is instead of snapping your wrist down, you're pushing it. The reason being, when you push it on the floor, it creates a slower bounce so you can keep your head up high and scan in whole handball area. So our assistant is going to be dribbling around, make sure his hand are wrapped around the ball, down, making sure he's dribbling it nice and waist height, not too high, nice and control, back up straight and looking up. Now once you get the hang of doing it really slowly, try and do it with a little bit more speed under control. And while you're dribbling your learning partner is following closely behind the partner leader following the leader. And then it's up to you where you want to change over. So when we change over, just pass it across, then it might follow the leader. You'll be back up to the train. In your today's session, you'll be looking at the passing. There's five different passings, key passing handles that you're going to be going through today. And you should be doing in your lesson. So the third pass is simply called a hip pass. It's where you'll be driving across your hip and you're going to aim for your partner's core because that's where they're going to catch it more successfully all the time. You don't want to be moving up here, up there, because the more movement they have, the less chance they're going to catch it. So hip pass, nice and easy, driving through the hip, one foot in front, driving through the hip, nice and catch. Through the hip, catch. Standing nice and still, you're getting used to the hip pass. Come across the hip. Now the neck pass is the overhead pass. They need to make sure your arm is nice and straight. But this will be important for later on when you do your tackling sessions and your interception sessions. Okay? But nice overhead pass, overhead nice and straight, coming down towards the core of their body. Nice and catch, arm nice and straight. What I like to do with the kids is make sure their arm is straight. You can go smelly armpit. So smelly armpit passing or overhead pass is what we call it. Now, our next pass is what we call a bounce pass. It's nice and simple, sit at the last we throw it down, make sure there's a pass three quarters away towards the person, making sure the ball's in the floor. Make sure you put your arms nice and straight when you're passing, making sure there's no pass. Now our next pass is called a jump pass. Now this is where you use a jump pass to get a high advantage of a defender or to get past a defender to make your pass. So there's one step in, you're going to take a step, jump up, keep your feet together, arms nice and straight, throwing down into their core. So one step in,
arms nice and straight, feet together, dumping in. Then you can, then you can progress that into two stepping. So you do your right foot, then your left foot. If you're right handed, do your left foot. Do your right foot. If you're left handed. <laughs> so right foot, left foot, jump. So they can do a little jump, or the higher the jump, the better. The last one, five pass, we call a side pass. Now we use that to have a fake going left to right, nice and quick, side pass. So as you're counter attacking up, you can just side pass to your partner. So arm extending. If you want to, you can step into it, get a bit more power into it. Keep an eye on your partner. So you can try and progress this to do communication, so name calling as well in all sports. As soon as they call the person's name, they know that they're going to be getting the ball. Now you can progress this by moving, get them moving around the handball court, practicing all the five different passes as well. Okay. So once you've done your five different passes, you can have a little competition within the group. You can start doing all sorts of passes, see how many passes they can do within a minute as well as dribbling around as well. As soon as they drop it, you start from zero again.